Hi friends, we are starting a face to face offline batch in Bangalore with SS Academy. That is for CA final financial reporting paper number one. I yeah, will be taking exactly two months from 1st November to 31st December. We will complete it. It is starting from 1st November 2022. Yes, and in Jayanagara branch of SS Academy, we have morning batch and evening batch will be at Seshadripuram SS Academy. Right. And if the student is missing because of any reasons, right, they are going to get a backup class. All right, we'll ensure that their things, I mean, they will study and complete. And from the face to face batch, you know the benefits out of it. We'll be completing the syllabus in time. You don't need to postpone and you don't need to compromise for your goals. See you in the class. Please share this information with your friends. That will help me and as well. Thank you. Next, for my books, that is an Indies Made Easy, our financial reporting Made Easy and Fast Track Summary book. Yes, you can uh, order in ravikanthmiriala.com or you can contact the given number for the books. Right. For, your, for your doubts, clarification, please join the Telegram group, Indies Discussion Group, RKM. These charts are from my book. Quick revision fast track chart book on financial reporting, which is available in my website that is ravikanmiriala.com and it is available in the market. Yeah, let us look at India S21 that effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. Yeah, see here the primarily first you have to uh, decide what is the functional currency of the entity, right? Other than the functional currency, every currency is foreign currency. And here there are basically two topics. One is uh, foreign currency transactions taken place by the entity. Next, translation of foreign currency financial statements of a foreign operation, foreign operation into functional currency. Yeah. But anyhow, first, what is foreign currency? That is other than functional currency. What is functional currency? Yes. So, entity has to decide what is the functional currency means that is the currency of the economic environment. Economic environment means in simple words you keep it as a market. Yeah, the currency of the market in which the entity is dealing, in which the entity is doing the business. Okay, how do you decide which is the functional currency for the entity? There are primary factors, there are three primary factors and secondary, two secondary factors are there. You should decide based on the primary factors. If you are not in a position to conclude it based on the primary factors, then you have to look into the secondary factors. Then you are supposed to look into the secondary factors. Okay. The, the primary indicators. Yeah. Indicators are three I told you. Yeah. See, this is indicator. Yeah. It's not the conclusion because it requires a professional judgment. I mean, um, sometimes even though after looking into primary and secondary indicators, still there can be, I mean, no conclusion. Under that circumstance, management has to decide. Primary, I mean, primary indicators, those are three. That is the currency which influence the selling price. That means mostly sales are taking place in which currency. And the second is, the currency of the country based on the whole market forces and regulation selling. I mean, selling prices are decided based on which market. That is, uh, which market, that market, what currency is there. That is second point you are supposed to consider. And the third one is with respect to expenses. That means most of your expenses are incurred in which currency. Right. These are the primary indicators. And secondary indicators. I mean, how are you financing? I mean, you are financing in which currency? That means you are issuing equity share capital or debentures. I mean, debt or equity is coming in which currency? Second, your retained earnings, your retention of money. I mean, whatever the profits you got, that retention is taking place in which currency? See, these secondary indicators are supporting indicators. They are not the basic and deciding indicators. Okay, right. So that's why, as I said, primary indicators go first priority, secondary go only second priority. That is only when you are not able to decide with the help of the primary indicator, then have a look at the secondary. Otherwise, no need to see. Right. So, I mean, you are supposed to maintain books of accounts in functional currency and otherwise also you can do it. But every transaction you are supposed to convert into the other currency will be hectic. Right. Next, def next important definition is 
monetary items what is monetary item monetary item means money held that is nothing but cash and cash equivalent and assets are liabilities assets are liabilities which are receivable or which are payable in money in terms of money but not money's worth and these assets or liabilities are measurable i mean either they are fixed or determinable determinable in the sense known that's all i mean i can measurable yeah if i say provision for uh, provision for income tax is it fixed it's not fixed it may change correct now depending upon the assessment it may change right so but it is measurable yes measurable that is called determinable don't give value to the word fixed or determinable our word you should ignore it you just give give importance to the words what you can see on the screen right now that's more than sufficient now let's get into the topic number one that is accounting for accounting of foreign currency transactions in our currency because foreign currency transactions are taken place by the entity so here initial recognition subsequent measurement initial recognition in the sense when the transaction takes place that date you are supposed to use the rate on the date of transaction supposed to use the rate on the date of transaction okay and maybe for your convenience you can take an average this average is generally like weekly average fortnight basis or monthly average maximum not yearly average right and recognition transaction recognition took place on one date and settlement is happening on another date then the difference in this foreign currency rate is supposed to be transferred to profit and loss only nowhere else okay and subsequent subsequent in a sense it is a measurement on the balance sheet date right the measurement balance sheet it is based on the classification if it is a monetary item that is which is receivable or payable in terms of money in terms of money that's why it requires restatement it requires restatement using the rate on the balance using the rate on the balance sheet date and because of this book rate is something and balance sheet date rate is something then because of this there will be fluctuation gain or loss that has to be transferred to profit and loss profit and loss means profit and loss that is other income or other expenditure it should not be it should not be adjusted to sales or sales or purchases or cogs or assets nowhere right if it is a non-monetary asset right then it is based on the valuation that means is it measured at historical cost basis or is it measured at nrv or fair market value okay if it is measured at historical cost there is no restatement first if it is measured at nrv or fair market value then you have to measure it using the rate on the date of measurement rate on the date of measurement okay that is the important point next suppose you are i mean say revaluation reserve something suppose uh, normally the asset is increasing asset is increasing e increase is supposed to be rooted through oci then the foreign exchange fluctuation gain uh, attached to that asset also has to be rooted through has to be rooted through oci only that is what when the gain or loss are non-monetary item that is supposed to be transferred to oci oci means revaluation reserve then foreign exchange gain or loss foreign exchange gain or loss arising on such item also supposed to be rooted through oci even though we told p and l on the top no that will not be under this circum this is an exception to the above rule it has to be rooted through oci only you don't need to bifurcate that like some part should go to PNL, some part should go to OCI. There is no such bifurcation available and re not required first of all. Entirely it will go to PNL along with the revaluation gain or loss. Foreign exchange fluctuation gain or loss also will be rooted through OCI. Next topic number two. That is translation or conversion of foreign currency financial statements of a foreign operation. What is a foreign operation? Foreign operation is a foreign subsidiary or foreign joint venture, foreign associate or it can be a foreign branch yeah, whose activities are taking place in foreign country okay, or in the foreign currency basically. Yeah. So what are we supposed to do since right now you have to decide whether that foreign operation right first thing whether the foreign operation is integral foreign operation or non-integral foreign operation you have to decide. If it is integral foreign operation, then that foreign that foreign branch or subsidiary, they must also be following our currency as the functional currency. 
so since they are also correct now even though physically it may be us branch but it is preparing the financial statements in indian rupee because it is integral foreign operation right then conversion will become easy because a holding company is also preparing in rupees and uh, foreign operation also preparing in rupees Con there is no need of translation there is no need of conversion but if the foreign operation is non integral foreign operation yeah what is non integral foreign operation this is which is not integral foreign operation what is integral foreign operation integral foreign operation is nothing but uh, i mean integral part of the entity whose cash flows are going to affect i mean foreign operation cash flows are going to affect the cash flows of the holding company or the parent company or the head office right and for that they have given some few factors i mean whose activities i mean which is integral they have defined in accounting standard what is non integral is defined okay right so as per the index yes, who which is integral whose activities are just like an extension of the uh, extension of what reporting that means there is no great autonomy and there are high proportion I mean there is a large number of transactions taking place between the foreign operation and the entity and the transaction of the foreign operation directly affects cash flows which i told you and foreign operation foreign operation cash flows i mean whatever the foreign branch generates that amount is not sufficient for their own running under that circumstance you are supposed to say it is integral if it is not integral that means it is not integral in the sense it has a significant degree of autonomy i mean they are independent that means they are able to run their own business they are able to borrow they are able to pay they are able to advertise they are able to fix the selling price everything they are able to do on their own then i can say that foreign operation is non integral foreign operation yeah under that circumstance correct na under that circumstance a non integral foreign operation will treat it as a separate legal entity separate entity separate entity and you have to fix what is the functional currency for that entity what is the functional currency for that entity because integral foreign operation ko ho ho or parent functional currency will be the functional currency for this integral foreign operation but with respect to non integral foreign operation we have to decide that means we have to look at the three primary indicators two secondary indicators deko accordingly you are supposed to fix it yeah so now you are supposed to convert it so how do you convert it sir it's very simple all assets and liabilities all assets and liability that means whether it is a monetary item non monetary item does not matter everything you convert it using the closing rate next all pnl related item that means income expenses everything use the average rate correctly speaking they say use the rate on the date of transaction but fine average rate you take it and obviously this will not tally correct now after translation it will not tally there will be there will be fluctuation difference a fluctuation difference should be transferred to fctr account foreign currency translation reserve account ko transfer karo not to the profit and loss okay right and there is one more point what is that one more point here right generally if there is a long term foreign currency i mean long term foreign currency monetary item in general the translate monetary item monetary item requires restatement on every balance sheet date yes if there is any fluctuation difference that is supposed to be transferred to pnl statement yes but there is an exception yeah okay what is that exception um yeah the exception is in the long i mean it is say long term foreign currency monetary item that means loan given or loan taken if it is given by the parent company to subsidiary company parent company to subsidiary company and it is neither expected to recover i mean neither uh, i mean neither agreed or not even likely to happen that we are going to get back under that circumstance if the parent company is preparing separate financial statements that is stand alone financial statement as usual that translation will be transferred to pnl okay the foreign exchange fluctuation gain will be transferred to pnl but when the company is preparing the consolidated financial statements company is preparing the financial statements that fluctuation gain which was transferred in the stand alone to profit and loss no that will be routed through oci because loan itself is not likely to get back in the in the foreseeable future then what is the point to say that i mean it may not come principal only don't come 
then why should I transfer the gain or loss and foreign exchange fluctuation gain? That's why we wanted to hold it separately under FCTR. We'll transfer it to FCTR account. And with respect to consolidation, see consolidation, normal rules of consolidation, what you learnt in India is 110, same thing will be happening. No new things will take place. Next, as you know, under India is 110, we will be eliminating intra-group transactions. Correct intra group balances will be eliminated. Yes, intra group transaction balances will be eliminated, but foreign exchange fluctuation gain or loss will not be eliminated. The reason the parent is exposed to the foreign currency risk, right? Since they are still exposed to the foreign currency risk, the group is exposed. That's the reason we should not eliminate it, right? Yes, as usual, as we said, like it is a non-integral foreign operation that is non-integral foreign subsidiary or associate joint venture. The difference, fluctuation difference will be transferred to FCTR. IFCTR also one reserve. That reserve is supposed to be allocated between the parent and NCI as usual. Okay, right. Um, and normal things like uh, which having significant accounting policies, different accounting period, these are all normal. Right. There is one more small point. That is complete or partial disposal of FO, right? Foreign operation. When do you say it is a complete disposal? Complete disposal in the sense, suppose I have 80% stake in the company, in this one subsidiary. Suppose if I sell 80% is full, then it is called complete disposal. One. Second thing, sir, I sold only 60%. Out of 80%, 80 means 60%, I sold it off. Okay, 60% sold means what is left with me is 20%. That means haven't I lost control? Yes. So, even though I have either significant influence or normal investment, but I lost control, that is the reason we treat it as complete disposal. Yeah, if, if there is a complete disposal of the foreign operation, the FCTR should be routed through P&L. FCTR should be transferred to P and L. That means you are supposed to de-recognize the FCTR 100% even though you are holding 20% or less than 20%. I mean to say, maybe having significant influence or maybe having some investment. Okay, right. In all other circumstances, that is partial disposal. Partial disposal in the sense, there is no loss of control. I have 80% stake, I sold 10%. What did I do? I sold only 10%. So that means I have still 70 percentage and I am controlling the other party, right? When I am controlling the other party, then to the extent of 10 percentage of FCTR, FCTR in the reserves and surplus, FCTR may 10 percentage should be transferred to NCI because of the transaction 80 percent to 70 percentage, our stake came down but control is not moved. That's why entire FCTR will not be transferred or 10% of FCTR also will not be transferred to PNL. Nothing will go to PNL. Our 10% portion simply will come to NCI. That is that will be taking place in the statement of changes in equity. Nothing is getting rooted through profit and loss statement. Okay, right. Ha. Suppose can we change the functional currency? Yes, absolutely. When? When the, I mean, I told you functional currency is the currency of the economic environment in which the entity is doing the business, right? Suppose I was in the UK market so far, now I stopped doing business with UK market and I went to US market. Yes, now my business, my, my functional currency may be US dollar. That's all. So, I mean, you are supposed to do under that circumstance, functional currency is changing, correct? Now, you should decide which date functional currency is changing. Management will decide. From that date, only prospective, nothing is retrospective. Prospectively, you will apply the new functional currency from that date. Yeah, because of which, if there is any gain or loss, some small difference comes out, that's supposed to be transferred to OCI. Right, that's it. Nothing else is going to be there. Yeah, few more small points are there that is with respect to accounting standard 11, that obviously you are aware of it. That's it, my dear. If you feel this small video is helpful for your quick revision just before examination please share it with your friends thank you thank you very much and wish you the very best